Hello, everyone, and welcome to this special podcast from Fellows of the Auctioneers. I'm Michael Heyman, and during my career as an interviewer, I've interviewed business leaders, people in public life, sports stars, um, people in entertainment. But you know what? I've never interviewed my dad. And it's an absolute pleasure, therefore, to um, focus this interview on uh, the story of Peter Heyman and Parker's Jewelers, because um, it's going to be um, his work uh, that is being auctioned um, by fellows in, in the coming days. Um, and so it's a real pleasure uh, for me to um, be able to turn the tables on my father for this uh, for this one off opportunity um, and go full Jeremy Paxman on him to sort of like bring um, to his story to life. Uh, so I, I was going to call you Peter. I'm going to call you Dad. Dad, hello. Good morning. It was great to see you and um, a big week coming up. Um, there's an auction of hundreds of lots of, of watches that, that you built up um, during your business career. Some amazing um, watches in the sale. What's inspiring you about the auction? What, what, what would you want people to, to know in terms of the opportunity at hand? Well, the first thing is for them to know that they're getting good value for the money once they part with the hard-earned cash. Uh, and I would like to think that, that we're a professional company and and that everything that we've got off, offering is, is well-sourced, well-priced and in good condition. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, just looking at um, the catalogue, um, there is an array of watches from all of the major brands, from Rolex through to Amiga to a whole, you know, I mean, something for everyone in, in there. But if you were to advise people on, I mean, you've sold watches for, for decades now. I mean, in terms of what makes a good buy, what, what should people be thinking about when they when they look at the auction? Well, most people are, are buying for two reasons. First of all, they've got a bit of spare cash and they, they don't want to buy a product that they're going to lose the money as soon as they bought it. Now, in my experience with my watches, not many people have ever lost money with things that we've sold them. Mm. Are, they, are they a good investment? Yes. Mm. I mean, in terms, I mean, a lot of people talk about the, the big three are, are um, classic cars, wine and, and, and watches. Why Why do you feel, when? what's the case for watches, do you think, in terms of why people should, should think about them as an investment purchase? Well, only that I know something about watches and I don't know a lot about wine, so... so how to so drink I, it. I, I, pardon, and you, well, yeah. I know how to drink it, yes, of course I do. Uh, cars, cars, it's only the big marks from the... From the old days, I don't. I don't think modern cars are an investment. Mm. Uh, but but watches are right. I mean, and actually, you can have, you can have a lot of fun with it, right? But the other thing, sorry, uh, the other thing is, it's all about the price that you pay. If you just walk into a retail shop and pay the retail price and the VAT and everything else, well, then it's going to be hard to show a profit. Buying things from secondhand dealers or through the, or through the auction through fellows or whoever else you choose to go to, uh, there aren't these added costs. So so your money should be reasonably safe. Mm. I mean, I suppose that that's the head, but there is also the heart. You know, the, these are these are things that you're going to wear and things that, you know, ultimately um, you get very attached to over, over the lifetime. I mean, in terms of your own passion for watches, what, what's inspired you about them? What, what are the what are the brands you like? Uh, Amiga is my favourite is my favourite brand, uh, and Vacheron Constantine, which is a little known brand over here, but very very classy. But I I like him. Yeah, the the other thing about about buying a watch is you've got to put it on your wrist. This is if you're buying it to wear it. You put it on your wrist and think, oh, I'm glad I bought this. Mm. That's that because you're going to look at it dozens of times a day. Yeah, and of course it's a sort of um. It, it, it it's just the, it's the look it's the feel i mean in terms of the sort of the very i mean you like watches from different eras don't you i mean what what's it, what's your favorite era for a watch uh 60s or before mm. uh, what why, why is that i just like the style of them but mm. um the modern big the modern big automatics they don't suit my wrist in any case 
Mm. But they're so, lovely watches as well, though, aren't yeah. they? In their own way. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're they're real they're real triumphs. But I mean, I suppose every every decade of watches is a is a real reflection of design and aesthetics. Um, and and you can get something out of every decade that you're buying if you buy them as investments. Yeah. But the other thing is if you buy watches from the from the 60s and 70s, um your your money should be safe and they should be still in a reasonably good condition. Mm. Um, so you don't want to be dashing off to the watchmakers every five minutes to, to have your watch regulated or mm. or repaired. Now I, I wouldn't even hazard to guess how many watches you've sold during your career, but maybe there is one which is the most memorable. What what's the what's the one that you'd share as being the one that might not be on this auction, but maybe maybe on the next. What what's the, what's the biggest one you sold? Well, as far as price is concerned, the most expensive watch I've ever sold is a um, platinum Daytona, mm. which went for hundred and fifty thousand. Um, so, so that's a Rolex. That's a Rolex. Uh, and and explain the Daytona. What 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 is it aesthetically? Well, it's um, it they were originally made famous by. Uh, by Paul Newman, uh, his the actor. I've, I've, I've forgotten. I've forgotten the one that got, got sold a couple of years ago, but for untold millions. Yeah, one one of the reasons would have been because he'd worn it, but it was an unusual watch in any case. Mm. Uh, and and it's funny because when when I think about you know watches having looked at the catalogue is that you know you see watches that are attacked attracted or attached rather to to names like Paul Newman or the James Bond franchise. I mean, there is something about adventure with wristwatches as well, isn't there, in terms of what it what it does for the for the human heart. Yes, but 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 the but I I, I don't go for the really collectible or or I didn't do anyway. Uh, for the really collectible watches, we we went for the commercial watches where where we were looking to sell to watch lovers, people mm. who would like a nice watch to put on the wrist. But keep it within everybody's budget. Mm. Yeah, I mean, there are some. Obviously, there are some. There are some high budget items on 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 this sale. But you, but you are right. There is there is something um, for everyone. I mean, I There's suppose something for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that that brings in. You know, I suppose you, you talked there a little bit about the proposition. Um, but the reputation for Parkers is that it's a business that looks after its customers. I mean, that that is the USP. I mean, is is there a is there a secret in how you got that right? Well, how did we get it right? Well, first of all, you, you've got to know what you're talking about if, when, if, when a customer asks you a question. But then you go right right the way through after you've sold it to them. You know, you can't be like a car dealer. Well, once we've sold it, that's it. Mm. You know, when the customer comes back and said he's got a little problem with his watch, you've got a duty to put it right, which is that's what we've always done. And consequently... We've always received high ratings on Trustpilot and eBay and every, everything else. Yeah, and, and presumably you've got to like your customers as well. I mean, enjoy their stories, yeah. enjoy their ambitions with what they want to achieve with a purchase. Yes, I've made a lot of friends out of clients. Mm. Yeah, but but as the um, as the net spread wider, you know, we kicked off with local people, but but now. We've, we've sent watches all over the world. Yeah, now you've got an international business. It's a phenomenal story. I mean, I'm I'm sort of imagining that the team of fellows are probably sort of sat listening to this interview thinking, well, we've got a lot we want to say about cars, but we are, um, because of what you've said, but we are talking about watches today. And, of course, you've you've chosen um, fellows um, to sell your collection. Um, what, what, made you, what made you choose fellows? Well, I've, I've dealt with them for 25 years. Uh, I know Mr. Whitaker, who's the MD personally, uh, always found him very, very um, easy to deal with. But mainly, we've we've bought off them. But now, now we've come to the end of the road as far as my career is concerned. I then need to use somebody I can trust uh, to um, to dispose of the watches. Yeah, and yeah, and I think fellows fellows are the one. They've got a good reputation. Brilliant. Now, you've talked about the end of the road. I mean, I'm sure it isn't the end of the road, but merely a fork in the road. But 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 the fork starts with the fact that, that um, Parker's Jewelers has got an, a new chapter in its story. It, it is a brand that goes back many, many years. I mean, um, tell us a little bit about 
what's next and, and what you've passed on. Yes, well, the, I mean, it goes back to 1883 when it was founded. There was, there was a Mr. Parker and there were successive Mr. Parkers until um, until about 75, I think. The, la the last Parker um, disappeared, Mr. Parker, and then a friend of mine. But anyway, in the end, I, I bought the shop in 77, something like that. Uh, anyway, now it's time for me to move on, and I've I've sold the brand and the name to uh, to David Myers in Hatton Garden, who I've known for forty five years, and who would should should carry on the the uh, the traditions that we've already started. Mm. Well, Mr. Parker too. Yeah, I mean, and it is a great legacy. I mean, thinking about the businesses that you know, not just the customers, but Harrods, Harvey Nichols, Hatton Garden. I mean, these are all the places where the Parker story has has found great outcomes in terms of customers and 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 watch sales. I mean, you're now. Um, I mean, nobody can blame an 82 year old for retiring, but I doubt that you are retiring. I mean, if this is the first half of your life, what's what's the next half look like? Well, I'm going to keep my eye in. Um, I've been engaged by, by Mr. Myers, who now owns Parkers, as a consultant. Um, uh, no payments come my way up to now, but I'm hoping for the best. Well, um, but we're not using this podcast to sort of like you know put him under pressure, are we? But uh, it's but really, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, hopefully... yeah but, but when you say keep your eye on, I mean keep your eye on with watches, presumably. Yes. No. I'm, look, I've always traded all my life. Um, I don't want to bore you, bore your listeners how far back I'm going to go to, but I've, I've been trading for a long time with various products. But then I've, when I hit upon uh, the objects that I like, i.e. watches, that's how I want to finish my days. Well, I think that's probably a good place to finish th this interview because I think nobody can deny all of the successes you've had during your life, Dad, as an entrepreneur. But I think most notably as a really inspiring um, builder of a watch collection and a watch business. Um, and of course, um, people listening to this podcast are going to have a, a great opportunity to um, um, to buy many of those products um, over the coming days. So I'm sure they would want me to wish you well. Um, and we're going to hand this podcast back to fellows, the auctioneers. I'm Michael Heyman. You've been listening to Peter Heyman and the story of Parker's Jewelers. And thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.